Kyrie eleison. Lord, have mercy on us as we listen to, reflect on, and live out the gospel in our world today. So many beautiful, moving, and important things in our service today. The dedication of young lives with their parents and us committing to support and shape those lives. This powerful Kyrie still moving us 200 years after Schubert wrote it. And soon an invitation to gratefully come to the Lord's table. Now any of those could stand alone, but they are tied together beautifully as one by today's gospel from Mark 12. In our journey through Mark, the shortest of the gospels, this will be my shortest sermon. Whose head is on it? That's the crucial question Jesus asked his opponents when backed into a corner to declare loyalty to their agenda. His opponents here were Pharisees and Herodians, two parties within Judaism with different goals, but both Pharisees and Herodians agreed Jesus must make no trouble for Herod or Caesar. They wanted to accommodate the empire, keep the peace, and not offend those in power. They asked Jesus whether they should pay tax to Caesar or not. Jesus knew their question was bigger than that, so he gave them a bigger answer. After he got them to identify whose head was on the coin, he said, give to Caesar the things that are Caesar's and to God the things that are God's. Clearly, Jesus was talking about more than a silver coin. That question, whose head is on it, is a question that still works today. It's a way to say whose claim, whose purposes, whose goals are being served by going along with this particular action or collective social behavior or belief. Who has a vested interest in what we do? Who has their moral imprint on it? I think that's a question we should be asking more often these days in our politically polarized world. Whose head is on it? Whose moral imprint is on the coin of, say, our culture's fear of undocumented immigrants? Whose likeness is on the coin of growing Christian nationalism? Whose imprint is on the recent backlash against having open, respectful public discussion on social issues like race, the legacy of slavery, climate change, the rights of sexual and gender minorities, and many more issues. Whose claims are being served when we are morally outraged by Russia's indiscriminate bombing of Ukraine, but take a pass when Israel indiscriminately bombs Gaza? When our leaders tell them to please bomb a little more carefully and then veto ceasefire resolutions. Isn't intentional mass killing of children and adults always evil? No matter who does it, every person of faith and goodwill, I would think, should see that and oppose it every time. But Caesar's head is on that coin. And we don't want to offend the empire. Maybe because we benefit from being part of it. The Gospel of Mark is a gift to us for our time. The goal of Mark was to bring clarity about who we are loyal to. To the empires of this world or to the reign of God embodied in Jesus. This short and pointed gospel aimed at Gentile Roman citizens is meant to convince the hearers to take the leap and live for the kingdom of heaven, not the empire. 
In the opening words of the gospel, Mark boldly rejected titles that Caesar claimed for himself, divine savior, son of God, and said, no, those titles belong to Jesus. Now in chapter 12, we hear it again in no uncertain terms. Give to Caesar the things that are Caesar's and to God the things that are God's. That's a gospel word for us today. It seems to me that nearly every choice we are presented in life, whether those choices are about what to buy, what to consume, where to live, where to work, what to do with our time and talents, what to do with our bodies, how to vote, how to treat our immigrant neighbor, how to run our business, how to respect those closest to us, how to honor the dignity of those who are different. All those choices can be discerned by asking ourselves whose head is on it. Whose agenda is getting a boost by the choice that I make? Is it the empire? Or is it God's kingdom of justice and peace? Whose moral imprint is on the choice that I'm about to make? Is it the systems of power who operate from the top down, who depend on coercion to maintain stability and keep their hold on power? Or is it God's kingdom that starts from bottom up and spreads like mustard and restores the broken and protects the vulnerable? In dedicating their children this morning, two households made a choice. They came into this space, stood in front of us all, and said, we are part of you, God's kingdom people. We are not shaping the future of our child on the assumptions of empire or of dominant culture, but on God's kingdom of justice and peace and love. And we want you to walk with us and support us as we do that. And when we come to the table in a minute, we will all have another chance to declare our choice, to pledge our devotion and our allegiance to God's reign by partaking of symbols of the kingdom of Christ, the bread and cup of suffering and salvation. That is why we are here today, friends, doing what we are doing. So may God help us.